Thank you all for attending International Day, Women's Ministries International Day of Prayer. That's how they call it. And um, I want to welcome some are on Zoom and uh, some are with us here. I want to welcome you all, our visitors. Be with us, if you may, for the whole day. We will really appreciate. And I want to thank the ladies who sang a wonderful song for us. Everything that has been going on so far is just beautiful. So this is uh, Women's Ministries International Day of Prayer. And um, it started in 1990. Since 1990, the Department of Women's Ministries Day at the General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventists. That's the day, that's the year they started promoting this special day. And it's a special day when women have the opportunity to come together, strengthen each other, spiritually make a spiritual bond, and pray together for one another. They end up praying for everything because that's who women are. They end up praying for everything. Sometimes you think, oh, it's Women's International Day of Prayer, and you think they are going to pray for themselves. But they end up praying for everyone, for the whole church. So the International Women's Day of Prayer, it only comes once a year, and it comes on the first Sabbath of March. Hope you are correct today. Is it the first Sabbath? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it doesn't happen that way anyway because of other programs, but usually that's how it uh, comes um, so this is the day, as I said, where we can pray, encourage one another, and sometimes looking into the stories of old in the Bible where we can share some experience or emulate some examples that happened there. So today, the um, theme for today is transformed by prayer, transformed by prayer. However, our sermon, um, the um, a message from our sermon is saying incredible power of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we are in your presence. Lord, as we are going to break bread together, sharing the promises, claiming the promises, and sharing with one another, Lord, I pray for your Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us and protect us. Be with each and every one of us, from the elderly to the small to the youngest, and bless us all accordingly. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Before I go into this message, as you can see, today is the two of us, and it's saying, uh, my name is there, we invite you, and Sister Resna, we are there. Sister Resna is the women's ministry's leader, as the church knows. Myself, I am the prayer ministry's leader, but it has taken us a long way for the two of us to share a sermon here. And uh, each time I'm talking to her, she says, oh, sister, where my, oh, my nerves, my nerves, they start kicking. And you know what? Both, both of us nerves are kicking here. So we, I will ask you to pray for us so that these nerves, we won't concentrate on them but we concentrate on the message. Yeah, our message today, as we say, it focuses on prayer, the transforming power of prayer. And before we progress further, let us first reassure ourselves, uh, ourselves of an important characteristic of prayer. What is prayer? Uh, in Steps to Christ, I think it's page 93, it says, prayer is uh, opening, the opening of your heart to God as to a friend. I don't know if you don't have a friend, but if you have got a friend, you might understand this, yeah? The opening of your heart to God as to a friend. But how do we do that? How do we open our hearts to God as to a friend? Or sometimes, how do we pray? When should we pray? What is the best time to pray? Does God answer our prayer more when we pray in the morning or when we pray in the afternoon or maybe midnight? Yeah, some people, they go to sleep and they wake up at midnight to pray. Does God answer our prayer more because we have prayed on a specific time? 
Let me share this quote uh, from the book Prayer, page 223. Uh, it says here, there is no time, no place, uh, there is no time or place in which it is inappropriate to offer up a petition to God. So there is nothing that can stop me from praying. And there's nothing that can stop you from praying while I'm preaching here. Yeah? I don't want to see you go on your knees and, and start maybe folding your, and pray. But I know you can pray. Yeah, you can pray now. So there is no time or oh, place where you say, oh, I can't pray here. You can pray anywhere. In as much as we should show respect, humility to God by kneeling down in prayer, this does not stop us from praying. We can still pray anywhere and everywhere. We can pray to God whenever or wherever we can. There, is there are times and situations where we may not need to kneel or be in a special place to pray. We may not need to clasp our hands together and bow our head. We may not need even to close our eyes, but just need to open our hearts to God, our Father, and to talk to him in the privacy of my mind. That's prayer. That's prayer. Hebrews 4 verse 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. What a marvelous invitation God has given to each of us. We are invited to come into his presence, his throne room at any time. This is so unlike the earthly high officials or the heads of states or even the king himself where we need to make an appointment and possibly we are given months and months in advance to go and see them. Our almighty God, the God of the universe, our creator, the holy God who created us, he says you can enter to his presence at any time of the day or night. You can go there freely. Now that we have reaffirmed that God is always available to hear and answer our prayers, let us now, let us now go into his presence. Let's turn to the main theme of our message today, transforming prayer or transformed by prayer. As we come to God in prayer, he has the power to transform us or change our lives. He has the power to transform and change our situation and so much more. God does not ask us to change before we go to him so that all we go presentable. He invites us to come to him just as we are and he changes us. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 says, so all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. What this verse is trying to tell us is, we are not good. We are not perfect. But we can still come and meet God, our Father, in prayer. The Holy Spirit then changes us into his glorious image. And then our image or the way we are reflects the character of Jesus. So as Hebrews 4 verse 16 says, let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. It only means that every problem should be a call to prayer. A story is told, uh, it's saying it happened in a small town. A certain man was um, becoming prosperous in his business. He owned some pubs or maybe shops, store where you can, where he was selling beer or whatever it was. And then because he was becoming prosperous, he started purchasing and building more of these uh, pubs. To, to make his uh, uh, build, uh, business carry on. 
So he identified a place. He, he started to build a pub, to build a pub just across the road, like here. He started to build this pub just across there. But the church members were not happy with this, yeah? They were not happy. Just across as we come out and there's noise and everything. So they started to complain and they started to reason with him, but he didn't agree. So they, 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 they said, let's call for a day of prayer and fasting. Then they started praying and fasting, but the men carried on, and them carried on as well in prayer and fasting. And this building got that high, and eventually it got completed. The week before the opening of that building, lightning struck that building, and it was bent up to, uh, down to the ground. The church members, they rejoiced. They rejoiced God answers prayer. And some of the things, you know, we, when we pray to God and God answered our prayers, I think sometimes we get so excited and possibly we go and tell everyone. So they were so happy. God answers our prayer. Yeah, God answers our prayer. And then this man, because the, he lost, he took, he, he took them to the court. So they, he sued the church to the court. Oh, it's amazing what happened there. So at the, at the court, uh, the, the man said, it's because of these people, they prayed, and I had a misfortune with my building. And the church members strongly denied and said, it's nothing to do with us. It's not our responsibility. We are not connected to this building's destruction. They were replying, at the end of the trial, the judge commented, I don't know how I'm going to decide this case. It appears that we have a pub owner who believes in the power of prayer. And an entire church congregation that does not. <laughs> church, whether we believe it or not, if we pray, we can get incredible answers to prayer. Prayer does not change things, but it, uh, prayer does change things in our lives. Today, we can still focus on two areas uh, for transforming, uh, 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 for the transforming prayer, uh, power of prayer. First, prayer transforms or changes us. And second, prayer changes things in hard times. When we spend time with God in prayer, sharing our heart and seeking his uh, saving power, he works in us and changes us into the image of Jesus. Each day when we come to God in prayer, he renews and changes us, filling us with the fruit of the Spirit. And this infilling that we receive gives us all we need to face an unknown day with confidence. We are sure that we are not alone. This is a strength that, that is not our own, but God's. Here are some few, some ways that God can change our lives. One, when we pray, God forgives us, cleanses us, and gives us a new life. When we approach the throne of God, seeking forgiveness and cleansing, asking him for a new heart to save him, and have the confidence that God will hear and answer, the moment we ask, God begins his transforming work in our lives. And we have seen it in the Bible. I was it Daniel when he was praying. And the Bible says, when you fell down on your knees, a messenger was sent. So as soon as we start praying, God starts transforming us uh, for our, uh, our work in our lives. He removes all our sins and cleanses us from the ugly scars of sin. We don't need to walk around with feeling of guilt and regret. We don't need to be ashamed of others to see us because of the wounds caused by sin. When we come to our Father confessing our sins and seeking his forgiveness and cleansing, he takes our sinful 
um, he takes our sinful hearts and gives us a new and clean heart. Like Psalmist David, we can say, page me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. This change happens when we pray. Another thing that happens when we pray is God changes our attitude. Philippians 2 verse 5 and 8, I like this verse. It says, Let, I know there are people who know it off head. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider himself robbery to be equal with God, but made himself no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross. The life of Jesus is amazing. What was Jesus' attitude here? When Jesus came to this uh, earth, he was a suffering servant. He did not think life was unfair, and he did not start to complain. Instead, he surrendered his will, his mindset, or attitude in his father. And we must do the same. When we surrender our lives to God, we see life differently. And that is because our attitudes have been changed. We see things differently and we see people differently. We see the drug addict lying on the pavement and rather than look down on her or him for making bad choices, our hearts are broken as we see a child of God in need of our help. When we hear of someone who has committed a terrible crime, we do not rejoice over their prison sentence. Instead, we should lift them up to God in prayer and asking God to save his child. God changes our attitude to circumstances that happen in life. He changes our attitudes so that the people who we see will not see us but we'll see God in us. <laughs> Prayer transforms us and changes us in that we will have confidence that God hears and answers prayer. John writes, Now, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything, anything according to his will, he hears us. How many times have you prayed and wondered whether God would hear your, uh, your prayer or, and answer you? You waited and waited, and then you decide maybe it's not trustworthy. But this verse clearly tells us that if we ask God anything that is in his will, he will hear and answer our prayers. How would we know God's will then? Sometimes the Bible tells us God's will. We know that it is not God's will for us to kill someone or to steal. So we will not ask for that. But sometimes we do know God's will. Like, does God want me to buy a new car or a used car? Does God want me to, to buy a house or go to school? We can pray and God can show us his will. Many times we have to trust his will in our lives. When we pray, we trust that God, who knows the end from the beginning, will give us the best answer for our lives. We ask, but then we let God know that we are leaving all those things in his perfect will to make the final decision of our lives. Another thing, prayer changes me so that I will look to God and not to myself or to self. There's a story in Acts chapter 8. You can read it. It's quite interesting. In that story, in Acts chapter 8, we find a story of Simon the sorcerer. What he did, it amazed people, but it was not from God. When Simon saw the power of God revealed by Peter, John, and Philip, he also wanted 
to perform miracles that way. And he tried, so he said to Peter, please, can you sell me? Can you sell that to me so that I can do exactly what you're doing? But Peter rebuked him and said, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. Do we see what money can do? Simon wanted the power of God to use it for his own selfish reasons. He wanted the people to give him praise for performing miracles. But like Simon, we need to realize that only God can give us the help we need. Only him can change our lives. We cannot do it for ourselves. Neither can we do for any man. It is not about what I can do, but what God can do in me and through me to help and bless others. Prayer transforms and renews our minds. Paul writes um, uh, in, um, uh, in uh, Romans 12, verses 1 to 2. This is what Sister Vera has just read, and she read it so well. Sister Vera, thank you. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. One of the remarkable things about prayer is that prayer restores our minds. Only God can change the way we think about life, about ourselves, about others, and about the future. Only God give, uh, uh, can give us uh, the hope, courage, and peace we need as we live in this world. When we come to God in prayer, he renews and restores our minds. As we surrender our lives to God each day in prayer, he begins the transforming work and begins with the mind, that part of our lives that makes decisions, judgments, and choices. Prayer transforms us so that God reveals his power in us. James tells us that the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That's James 5, verse 16. When we pray with a heart submitted to God, he will act. We will see his power in our lives, and we will know that God's power is real. Then we can share what he has done so others will know what God can do, that he is a true and reliable God. Think of many times in the Bible when God revealed his power because of prayer, how he changed the lives of people who were involved. Think of Elijah on Mount Carmel when rained down fire from heaven to consume the water-drenched altars. Think of King of Nineveh when he calls for, to, for prayer and fasting to the whole city and the whole city was spared. Think of the prophet Elisha and many more when Elisha was surrounded by the Syrian army in the city of Dothan, his servant was afraid. Elisha prayed to God to save them and to open the eyes of the servant. God answered, and the servant saw an invisible army of angels surrounding the Syrians. Can you imagine how this revelation of God's power strengthened the faith of Elisha and his servant? The Bible is filled with such stories. God showed his power in Bible times, and he continues to do it in our lives. But we must discern the working of God in our lives, both small and big things. Amen. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Uh, you know, I was expecting a full congregation today, full church. 
But Matthew 18, 20 says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I will be in their midst. Yes. Right. When I asked um, Sister Wimby to preach for us today, she gladly accepted. But then she said, Sister Resner, we can do it together. And because Sister Wimby don't usually accept no for an answer, I agreed to that. <laughs> I agreed to that request. But then, as the time grew nearer, I thought, did I make the right decision? <laughs> So for a couple of days now, I've been agonizing about coming here to speak to our congregation today. But do you know, there's a song, and the, the title of the song is, Are the Voice of Jesus Calling? And my favorite verse is, while the souls of men are dying, and the master call for you, let none hear you idly saying, there's nothing I can do. Gladly take the task he gives you. Let his work your pleasure be. Answer quickly when he calleth. So here am I, O Lord, sent me. Amen. But if you hear a loud and a loud noise coming from up here today, it is my heart thumping very fast <laughs> and my knees knocking, <laughs> knocking together. But do you know, I believe that I will be led and guided by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that is a great comfort to me. So we carry on with the, the topic of um, this, 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 this part of the program. How transformed by prayers. How we can transform by prayer in these difficult times and difficult situation. Church, we must have faith in God. Trust him and pray earnestly. God will answer our prayers and set us free and give us peace. Amen. In difficult times, prayer can change us. Amen. And sometimes God allows us to face tough times in our lives so we can find that, that the only source of help is in God. It is in these trying times that we learn to depend fully on our Father. God is waiting to hear us cry out to him and say, Father, Father, I need you. I need you. I cannot do this on my own. I cannot do this on my own. These are times when God increases our faith and changes us. Let us look at two Bible stories and see how prayers change the lives of the people who prayed during the hard times in their lives. The first story is about a woman with the issue of blood. Matthew 9, 21 says, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be made whole. These words were coming from a poor, desperate, and destitute woman. A woman who for 12 years, just imagine 12 long years, suffered from a disease that made her life a burden and much suffering. She had spent all her means upon doctors, physicians, and remedies, and only to be told that she had an incurable disease and nothing could be done to cure her. Can we just imagine how this poor woman felt? But as she heard of the great healer, her hopes of being cured had revived. And she thought, if only I could get near him so that I can speak to him, I might be healed. She had the faith and she believed that one day she would be cured of this dreaded disease by the great healer. At this time, Jesus was on his way to the home of Jairus, the, the Jewish rabbi, who had entreated him to come and heal his daughter. Ooh, this was a broken-hearted petition. 
the rabbi said, my little daughter lies at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed. This request of prayer had touched the tender and sympathetic heart of Christ. And so he at once set out with the ruler for his home. They advanced but slowly as the crowd pressed Jesus on every side. So while making their way through the multitude, the Savior came to where the afflicted woman was standing. Over and over again, she had tried in vain to get near him. But now her opportunity had come. She was determined to see him. But she could see no way of speaking to him. She could not speak to seek to hinder his slow advance. The woman heard that healing came from just a touch of his garment. And fearful of losing her one chance of relief from this affliction, she pressed forward, saying to herself, If I may but touch his garment, if I may touch his garment, I know that I shall be made whole. Christ knew every thought of this woman's mind. And so he started making his way to where she stood. He realized her great need and how desperate she wanted to be healed. And he was helping her to exercise faith. And as he was passing, she reached forward and succeeded in barely touching the border of his garment. How wonderful that must have been for her. And from that moment, she knew that she was healed. It was that one touch that concentrated the faith of her life, of her life, and instantly her pain, distress, and feebleness had disappeared. And instantly she felt the thrill as of an electric current passing through her every fiber of her being. And then there came over her a sensation of perfect health. She felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Our God is a mighty, powerful God, and he will never leave us or forsake us if we would only trust him, have faith in him, and call upon him for help when we're facing difficulties in our lives, when we are in distress. Do we consider how we look or what others may think about us? as we are in God's throne room and conversation between us, each of us and our father is personal. Jesus heard this woman's prayer of faith and so he showed his love and compassion to this woman's faith in his power to save to the utmost of all who come to him. This poor woman, life was changed from sorrow to great joy and elation. So we can see now how prayer can change any awful situation we are facing, also changing people's lives. So why do we fail to go to our Lord Jesus Christ in earnest prayer when we are feeling low and in despair? Let us come to another story about when Peter was released from prison. In Acts 2, we'll find the story of Jesus, two, the two disciples of Jesus, James and Peter. First, King Herod killed James, the brother of John. And the killing pleased the Jews so well that King Herod seized Peter and placed him in prison. The story tells us that the church had a prayer meeting in the home of Mary, the mother of Mark, to pray for Peter's release from prison. God heard and answered their prayers. So he, went, so he sent an angel to release Peter from prison and guide him safely to the home of Mary, where the believers was praying. 
what the reaction of the believers when Rhoda, the servant girl, told them that Peter was at the door was very interesting and a bit unbelievable. The Bible says that Rhoda knew it was the voice of, P of Peter, yet when she told them, they doubted her. But were they not praying for this exact outcome? Yes. Yet they doubted it was Peter at the gate. My question is, why were they praying for Peter released from prison if they did not believe that God would answer their prayers? Church, we all need to have more faith in God and trust in him and believe in his every word. This reminds me of the story shared by Sister Wimby about the pub owner and the church members. When we pray, do we believe God will answer our prayers? And when God answers, do we believe he answered? Or do we just try to figure out a more concrete and logical answer? Never really believing that God did it for us. Do we resemble the pub owner who believed that the church members' prayers were responsible for his pub burning down? Or do we look like the church members who denied their prayers as anything to do with the pub burning down? I pray that as Christians, when we come to God in faith with our prayers, he would... He sh he sh it, we should be sorry, we should believe that he is willing and able to answer our prayers. Church family, every day when we wake up, do we wait for trials before we cry out to God? Or do we seek him each day in prayer, asking for his strength, his joy, and his courage to face whatever the day may bring? The quote, this quote from the book, Step to Christ, 19, page 1999, is one that can make a great impact on our lives. There is no time or place which is, in, is in, uh, inappropriate to offer up a petition to God. There is nothing that can prevent us from lifting up our hearts the spirit of, in the spirit of earnest prayers, in the crowds on the street, in the midst of a business engagement, when we are all alone and feel rejected by others, we may send up a petition to God and plead for divine guidance and help, as did Jeremiah when he made his request before King Artus Rixus. A closet of communion may be found wherever we are. We should have the door of our hearts open continually and our invitation going up that Jesus may come and abide as a heavenly guest in our soul. Although there may be tainted, corrupted atmosphere around us, we need not breathe its tainted hair but may live in the pure air of heaven. We may close every door to impure imaginings and unholy thoughts by lifting the soul into the presence of God through sincere prayers. Those whose hearts are hoping to receive the support and blessing of God will walk in a holier atmosphere than the earth and will have constant communion with heaven. We are encouraged by spirit of prophecy to talk to our Father at any time. Nothing can prevent us from talking to our Father. It does not matter where we are. We can close our eyes and talk to God. The doorway into the throne room of God is always open. It's always open to us. All we need to do is enter boldly and tell him everything that brings us joy or sorrow. 
He is willing to hear us, to rejoice with us, to sorrow with us. He is always present. His throne room doors are never closed. We do not need to clean ourselves in order to come before him. God cleans us. We do not need to have our lives in order to enter the throne room. God orders our lives. We do not need to be sinless that day because God is the one who cleanses our sins and gives us a new heart and mind like Jesus. What must we do to change into the image of Jesus? All we can do is to come. Come to the Father. Come to the foot of his throne. Being confident of everything that he, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. God has promised and he will do it. What about you today? Are you ready to ask God to renew your heart, your mind, and your life today? We all have regrets in our lives. We all wish there were things we, we had not done or said and choices that we've made. In God's throne room, there is hope for a new beginning. If you have the desire for God to change your life, then why don't you stand with me as we pray? Shall we please stand while our sisters pray for us? Let us pray. Sometimes my burdens are so heavy for me. Sometimes my burdens are so heavy for me. Sometimes my burdens are so heavy for me. Oh, I don't you pray for me. I pray for you and you pray for me. God and my Savior, Lord, on this International Day of Women, we come to you, Lord, just as we are. Mm. Heaven Father, we believe you are the Alpha. You are the balm in Gilead. Mm -hmm. You are the Comforter. Mm -hmm. You are the Divine God, the Lord of Lords. Heaven Father, there is nothing we can do without you. Father, we come to you, Lord, this afternoon as women. Father, we bring our burdens to you because we believe that, Lord, is only you who can help us, Lord. Father, as women, Lord, we come with our children. Father, we pray for our children in a special way, Lord, that, Father, may you meet them at their needs. The young children, Lord, we present them to you. Father, the youth, we present them to you. Those children who are in schools, Lord, we present them to you. The, the children at university, Lord, we present them to you. Father, take care of them. Take charge of their lives. Heaven, Father, in everything that they do, Lord, may you bless them, Lord, just as you blessed, Lord, Daniel and his friends. Heaven, Father, this time, Lord, we present the men into your hands, Father. Heavenly Lord, we pray for the men, Lord. Father, without the men, Lord, they are leaders of the house, Lord. Heaven, Father, be with them. Guide them, Lord. Precious Savior, this moment, Lord, I bring the women, Lord, single women into your hands, Lord, as they look after their children day in, day out, Lord, without any helper. 
Help them, Lord, and meet them in the special way, Lord. Heaven, Father, I pray, Lord, for the grandparents, Lord. Be with them, Jesus. Help them, Lord. Help them to teach the children, Lord, just as Timothy was taught by his grandmother, Lord. Heaven, Father, do not leave any woman, Lord, as you are blessing your people today. Heaven, Father, I pray, Lord, that you may help us, Lord, to have a spirit of oneness, Lord. In everything that we do, Lord, as women, help us, Lord, to be one. Help us, Lord, to look upon you, Lord, as our leader. Heaven, Father, there's nothing we can do without you, Lord. Without you, Lord, we are nothing. But, Lord, we know through the name of Jesus, through the blood of Jesus, Lord, you are, Lord, we are more than conquerors, Lord. There's nothing which is impossible, Lord. There's nothing which we can't do as women, Lord, because you are in charge. You are in control, Lord. Amen. Father, there's no name on earth, under earth, or in heaven given, Lord, unto us through which we can be saved. Amen. Oh, Lord, guide us. Oh, Lord, lead us, Father. Heaven, God, I just pray this morning, Lord, that you may help the women. Father, I pray for the whole church. Be with us, Lord. Guide us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Father, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for this day, the day of prayer. Father, we as women, you know, what is going through our lives. We have so many challenges. We have so many things ahead of us that you've entrusted us to save you in so many different ways. So Lord, I dedicate each and every woman in this room, young and old. Father, you have a purpose for their lives, Father. Mm. Father, you know that we, the, the main goal is to save you. So I pray in the name of Jesus, may we all have the zeal to save you, to have a closer walk with you, and most of all, to pray for one another, to pray for our church, Father, and to pray for all the congregation, Father. Father, I just want to say thank you that we also have men in this church, Father, as we all learn to love you more and save you more, Father, I dedicate all the men in church as well to you, Father. Mm. Cover them as they lead in different ways, in their whole work, everywhere that they do, Father. Be with them and also have, let them have the zeal to save you, Father, mm. so that we can bring lives back to you. But most of all, Father... I just agreed with my 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 sister, the, the little ones, Father. Father, we continue to cover them by your blood. The older ones as well, in uni, colleges, some are doing their exams at this point point in time. Father, I pray that you go before them and be with them, Father. You are the Father that can make things different. We have heard. What prayer change? What prayer does? It changes the heart. It transforms us, Father. As we leave this place, I pray in the name of Jesus that we will be transformed as members, as young people, as older people. Transform us and make us white as snow, and let Your love flow through us, so that we can love one another more and more. Bless us all and bless everyone who has come today and those who are not here today, Father, be with them. We know some are struggling that are still, they, we have Niels in hospital, we have um, Brother Raj, um, and we have Brother Isai, and we have some that I can't, I, I didn't remember their names, but Father, you know the challenges. And even some people that are here, Father, you know the challenges. Touch them in a special way, Father. Mm -hmm. Like what, what we've just learned, by touching your garment, Father, we are here just to touch that garment so that you can make us whole. So touch them in a special way. May your healing hand be upon them. Mm -hmm. Bless us all this afternoon as we fellowship this great day, as we have another program this afternoon, Father. Father, may we all rally together and 
praise you and pray together and I'll pray in one accord so that their prayers that everyone is praying can be answered. You know that what is burning in our hearts, we bring it before you this afternoon, Father. Make it whole, Father. But most of all, may it bring glory to you. Mm. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.